Hello, how's everybody doing today? This is Mickey. Well, a couple days ago, I was attending one of our camera club meetings here on the Eastern Shore, where, you know, we get together with photographers and friends, and we comment on pictures and critique pictures that we show uh, during the meeting. And during that meeting, a friend of mine showed a really, really nice picture. It looked like maybe an attic of a house in the Netherlands with a, a window with sunlight coming in. And we discussed, uh, he, he was saying that he'd kind of lost his mojo in photography, just really wasn't interested lately. And he was trying to get more interest back into his photography. And he thought he would grab some old photos and reprocess them to see if he could kind of bring his interest back into photography. And anyway, he was showing his photograph. And we discussed that maybe uh, bringing some extra light into the window and add more atmosphere would be a good way to enhance his picture. And he said he had tried that with his tools in Lightroom and he just really wasn't uh, happy with the effect. So I told him there is a way to do this in Photoshop, probably a little more effectively. Uh, and I tried to tell him about it in a minute or so that I had to talk, but that's just not enough time. So I thought I would put together a video for my friends uh, on the Tidewater Camera Club and also for my friends and followers on YouTube to show how we can easily put this effect in place in Photoshop. Now I know I spend a lot of time talking about Lightroom and very little time talking about Photoshop, but I guarantee you this is a very simple technique. You can do it in a few minutes and you'll be really pleased with the effects that it puts in place. So let's just jump right into that. All right, here we have a photograph in Lightroom and I've already processed this and you can see uh, I've made changes and transformed lens corrections. If we look at our masks, I've put about 10 masks on. Uh, if we look at the before and after, you can see that we really brighten it up, uh, brought more clarity to the window. You can see we had a lot of light coming in and it's hitting the floor right here. So we want to enhance that light coming in this window and hitting the floor to, get, to get, give this picture a little more atmosphere. So to get started, we want to jump right into Photoshop. And to do that, you hit Command-E. When you hit Command-E, it launches Photoshop and puts the first layer in, which is the standard background layer. Now, because Photoshop is a destructive process, we really don't want to make any changes or work on the background layer. We want to create a duplicate layer. And to do that, we hit Command-J. When we hit Command J, you can see we've created a new layer called Layer 1. All right, the first thing we want to do is bring in the light and, and put it exactly where we want it to be. To do that, we're going to grab this selection tool right here, right here, and we're going to choose the Polygon Lasso tool. And what we're going to do, we're just going to place dots or spaces along the area that we want to put the light beam in and then that will create a selection or a mask on this layer. So we're gonna click once here. Now, a tip is always start at a place that you can find at the, the end point very easily, all right? Because that helps create the selection. We're gonna click right here on this corner. We're gonna go across, click again here. We're gonna come down about right here. And this is kind of a your own interpretation of how this light beam would come in. You might want to put it here or put it up here. Completely up to you. I'm going to stick it about right here. Then I'm going to start coming out. And I'm going to come right here. And then maybe across the nose of this horse here. Because I can see where the light actually does hit it. And then come to the floor. And here I get kind of inventive. I don't want a light beam that just looks like a straight line. So I kind of do things like this. And then I want to come over here. I'm going to come across the, this uh, chair, come up here, and then I'm going to complete my selection by going up to the beginning point. And this is why I say always find a place that's very definitive that you can find because you want to connect these two to complete the selection. And when we do that, you see you get marching ants. So that is our selection of what our sunbeam will be looking like. Next, we're going to kind of put the light into our masking area, and to do that, we're going to use a gradient filter, which is right here. We'll click on this, and then we're just going to hold, uh, put our cursor somewhere in the center, and drag up to about right here, and then we're going to grab this bottom marker, and we're going to drag it down to complete out our gradient. So this is our gradient of the light beam. We have a little diagonal here, and if you move this back and forth, we get our uh, fall off or our uh, feather. So I, I don't really need a whole lot of feather. I'm going to bring this up a little more, maybe bring this down 
to add a little more light to the bottom here of our sunbeam. All right, so now we want to make this sunbeam so that we can see through it so that we can see the objects behind it. And to do that, we're going to go up here to our uh, layer mode and we're going to click and choose soft light. When we do that, you can see it kind of lightens it so we can see the sunbeam, but we can also see what's behind it, just like if it was a real beam of light. Now, uh, let's add a little blur to it so the edges aren't so harsh. And to do that, we want to make sure you have selected the mask by clicking on it right here. And then we're going to go up to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. And you can see it's kind of filtered the edges or blurred the edges. Right now we're at a radius of 70. If you make it bigger, it makes it a lot, uh, a lot softer edge. That's too soft for me. I'm going to bring it back down to 70 because I'll give you a hint. We're going to have a feather control here in a few minutes that helps refine this edge. So I, I want to have an edge that I can definitely see where the light's coming in right now. And I'll use my feather control uh, to make this beam a little a little nicer on the edges. All right, so now we have a Gaussian blur showing exactly how soft we want our edges to be. We'll click OK. The next thing we want to do is we want to add a little color here, all right? So to do that, uh, we put another layer on, another adjustment layer, and a lot of people would think we could use this one, which is hue and saturation. But because of this is a solid white and very light gray, it's going to be hard to add color to that. So what we want to use is a photo filter. And that's what this adjustment layer is right here. So we'll click this. As you can see, it throws another layer on and we get to choose the color. Now there are some colors that are just predetermined, but I like doing it myself. So I click on this color button here. I click on the color swatch. I'm going to make this a little more yellow, about like this. I'm going to choose this color right here. This is the color I want the sunbeam to be. All right, click OK. Now, if you move the density slider, you can see we can bring that color in. But you also notice we're bringing in color everywhere, and we only want it on the sunbeam. So to do that, we create something called a clipping mask. And a clipping mask uh, is a feature of a mask that says, I only want this this layer here, this photo layer, photo filter layer, to apply only to this layer. So you're clipping it from this layer to this layer. To do that, you're going to hold your Alt or Option key, and you're going to hover over the bottom of this layer, and you can see it turns into a little square with an arrow icon. As soon as you see that icon, you want to click. And then you get this icon, which signifies clipping layer. Now, now that we're clipping it, this color this color that we have here is only applied to the masked or the selected area. So as we change the density, you can see it's only hitting that layer. A really nice feature, clipping layer, really helps out. So we'll just add a little color to this. And now we kind of want to refine this. Remember I told you we could feather the edges. So what we want to do, we want to come over here to this icon here. We can feather the edges in this properties window right here. But I like to have a little more control, so double click on this masking icon and it brings up the properties window for your mask. And here we have a feather, so let's take this out to like 50% and you can see we already get a nice uh, feather on the edge of this, this sunbeam area. All right. So now that we have a feather, we'll say, let's try uh, 60 pixels. Oops, let's move it out to us. 60. Well, that looks pretty smooth. And now we have a shift edge. And what this does, it's the same as the expand edge uh, feature that we have in Photoshop. It just takes the, the uh, mask and expands it out beyond the marching ants. All right, so let's shift it out about 10%. And as you can see, it moved. we don't want to go too far. So if we go too far, we kind of start intruding on everything. We don't want that. We want to stay away from the windowsill. So let's go down to like 10% so we get a nice smooth edge uh, so that it looks more natural as the sunbeam comes in. So I'm going to click OK right here. All right, so now we can see that we have a nice sunbeam coming in through the window and you can see the edges of it right here coming across this toy, coming across the part of this chair, and then hitting the floor. 
Now, we can look at a before and after in Photoshop. It's not like Lightroom. We can't hit the backslash key. It's kind of trickier because we have all these layers. You can turn off each individual layer. We can turn off this clipping layer. We can turn off this mask for the sunbeam, and we can see a before and after. But if we want to see the whole effect, you go down to your background layer. You hold your Option or Alt key, and you click on this little eyeball here. It takes everything off and puts everything on at one time. Now to me, I, th I think we went a little too far on our expanding our edge. So I'm gonna double click here and I'm gonna shift my edge uh, a little less, maybe about like this, all right? Uh, and click okay. Now if we understand how a mask works, white reveals, black conceals. If we wanted to take away some of the edges of this, if we paint black on this mask, then we will take away some of this these, if you think this edge is too harsh. So we would need black paint. If we come over here to our paint selection, we can click here, and now we have black. We can get, grab our paintbrush. Let's take the opacity down to about you know 30% and our flow really too, really low too, like 15%. And this puts the paint on very slowly or takes the paint off very slowly. So if we wanted to soften this edge, make sure your opacity and flow is real low, you have black paint because we want to cover up the white masked area and you just lightly brush through this area right here. And you can see how we've taken that line off. All right, if you wanted to uh, take more off, say like this toy, we could just brush in here very slowly and we take some of the effect off that. Now, if you want to add some, say like in this area here, we want the sun to come in here a little more. We just change our paint to white. And then when it's in white, that means we're adding to this masked area. And we use the same opacity and flow. And then we just start, start brushing across this area here. And as you can see, it's adding in sunlight as we brush across. And you could see it right here. If we look at this area, you could see there's a little gray showing up. That means the more we paint, the more gray, which turns into white, and we bring it in. And we can like widen up our sunbeam area right here like this too. So that's the way for you can modify the mask once you have it in place manually by either, either using black paint to take away the sunlight or white paint to put in sunlight. All right, so we have those changes in place. Let's take one final look. We'll hold our Option or Alt key down. Say before, after before and after. Now there's one other thing we can do. Uh, if we were in Lightroom, we could use dehaze, but we don't have dehaze here. So what we can do is use our curves layer. So we're gonna come up here and we're gonna click on this layer, we're gonna activate it, and we're gonna click on our curves layer right here, and it brings it in, and we want to clip it to these layers. So again, we're gonna hold our Option or Alt key down and clip it to this layer. And then we're going to grab our black point, which is right here. And by increasing our black point, we increase haze, or we take in away black, which makes it look hazier. So we're going to grab this point, and we're just going to drag it up like this. And when we do, you can see how we're bringing haze in, and it gives us a little glow, because sun does make a little glow when it comes in a room. So let's bring it up to about right here, and we can see this effect, oh, uh, how it is applied and when it's not. This is a before, after, before, and after. So that just adds a little glow. Uh, just be sure that you clip it to these layers so we don't want to apply it to the whole photograph. We just want to apply it to the masking area that we put in. All right, now let's look at our before, after, before, and after. And once you're done, you hit Command S to save it and it will send it back to Lightroom. So here we are back in Lightroom. Let's blow this up just a little bit. And we can see our before and after. Let's uh, check, select both these photos and hit C for compare. And shrink this down a little bit. You can see before, which, you know, it looks okay. But, and after you can see just that little bit of light, that little bit of atmosphere comes in, just makes the picture just a little more interesting. And we did this kind of quick. You can still experiment more with more, maybe more light, a bigger area. Uh, and just see what kind of effect works best for you. But it's it's just a really nice, easy effect to bring the light in to enhance this picture a little better than, than the original. 
Well, I hope this helps out. If anybody has any questions, be sure to send me a note or send me an email. I'll get on it and help it just as soon as I can. And I can't wait to talk to you again soon. Thanks.